This is Unleashing Leadership, and I'm your host, Travis Moss, and we have talked about our four colored monsters. We've got the blue monster, the yellow monster, the green monster, and the red monster. And today we're going to talk about the monsters actually fighting with each other, like cats and dogs or oil and water. Red and green, yellow and blue. If you understand color, and the reason why I like the way that they've assigned the colors, and I don't know if they did this on purpose in the book, um, but I like the way that they've assigned the colors because the personalities and the colors themselves are truly dynamically opposite. If you look at where red and green fit on a color wheel, they are the opposite of each other. The term for this is called complementary, and it means that they are completely void of each other. So when we talk about colors and we're talking about complementary, we're not actually, that's not, a, that's not necessarily a compliment, right? We're not saying that they complement each other. We're saying that they contrast each other. They are the starkest contrast that you can possibly get. And the RBG color wheel, that's just, there's different types of color wheels. That's one of them. Blue and yellow are complementary. If you mix complementary colors, you take blue and yellow or red and green, they actually cancel each other out. They create a grayscale. It's actually how you get to grayscale. It's, it's kind of how you get to white or, or black. Um, when you put them side by side, though, you get that maximum contrast. So a fun little exercise that you can do is take two pieces of colored paper, paper take red, and take green and put them right next to each other. Don't overlap them, but put them right next to each other. So there's no there's no daylight between the red and the green. And stare at the line of red and green where the, where the two pieces of paper meet. If you stare at that, you will actually see the... It'll seem like it's vibrating. Like the edge gets blurry between the two. Because the colors contrast so aggressively. So there's a dichotomy here. And this requires us to stop and think about a couple of things. And if you've, you've you know, tried the team before, or if you have colleagues or, or employees that really just seem like oil and water or cats and dogs, chances are you're getting, you're, you're pairing complementary people. And again, remember, complementary <laughs> in real life, complementary sounds good. But when we're talking about personalities, the complementary part is actually opposite. So we're pairing opposite people. Um, and that's where some of the friction is coming from. We tend to migrate towards people most like us. So if I'm in a leadership position, I tend to promote people more like me. If I am in a hiring position, I tend to hire people most like me because I get along with them. It's really easy if I'm green to get along with a green. It's really easy if I'm blue to get along with a blue. We have the same perspective on a lot of things. You know, we work very similarly. Yellows and yellows, reds and reds. We, we tend to fill the room with people most like us. But if you have a room full of reds, you get a cage fight. They're going to try to kill each other. If you have a room full of blues, uh, nothing's ever going to get done. You're actually never going to get something to completion, or by the time you do, it's already stale. If you have a room full of yellows, um, they can't stay focused enough to get anything done. They need somebody helping them staying on task. These are not knocks against these colors. This is just how they are. If you have a room full of uh, greens, you're probably going to find them wandering around. They'll be doing work, but you won't know if they're doing the right work or the wrong work, but they'll be doing work. So we need to understand the way that affected teams function and the way that these uh, monsters kind of impact how the team works. Reds want to go. Greens want to stay. Greens are comfortable where they're at. Reds, not. Can you see how that might cause some friction? Blues want to think about the details. They want to dwell on the details. Yellows, <laughs> let's, just, let's just do something and see what happens. Then you'll have all the details you need, blues. If opposites are paired, we have to make sure back to empowerment, that boundaries are clearly defined and expectations are clearly set ahead of time. You cannot leave it to chance. They will not be able to figure it out themselves without a major power play. Both on the ends of opposites 
think that they are absolutely right and the other person is crazy. This is where that name surrounded by idiots come from. If I'm a red, I look at a green and think if I'm not initiated in this framework, I'm thinking that red's an idiot and the green's or that green's an idiot and the green's looking at the red saying, hey, that red's an idiot. And the blue's looking at the yellow going, they're an idiot. And the yellow's looking at the blue going, they're an idiot. Everybody's looking at each other like idiots. We are going to be able to find um, more commonality. The blue probably can find more commonality with the red or the yellow, um, or I'm sorry, the red or the green, just simply because there's a little bit of the blue color and a little bit of the red color there. There's, there, you can actually find those colors within blue. There's shades of them, right? There's, there's actually, they can, they can exist in nature where there's, there's a, a mix of those. Some people, sometimes you ask them, well, what do you think you are? And they're like, well, I'm a little bit of yellow. I'm a little bit of blue. You can't be. That means you kind of got a split personality. So maybe you're a little bit of yellow and a, and, and a little bit of green or a little bit of yellow and a little bit of red. Um, but it's really hard to be opposite personalities at the same time that's why the whole surrounded by idiots things come we're looking at people saying what the hell are they doing because especially when you look all the way across the aisle at your your mirror opposite it's just it doesn't make any sense what that person's doing position the right monster for the right job if you have a heavily detail-oriented project a blue or green is probably going to be some of the most important people on the team. However, if there's a hard deadline, you're going to probably want a red somehow related or, or participating with that team because the red will work towards that deadline. Um, you're not going to get that necessarily with the blue or the green. Ideally, you would have a, a blue with heavily detail-oriented project, but the green's probably the closest to a blue if you don't have a blue. If you could choose, though, you might pair the red and the blue together. They will work very, very well together. Um, the red will keep the blue on task. The blue will make sure that all the grinding work gets done. And it's it's a really good pairing. There's, there's a lot of symbionts there. But if you have to pair red with a green, let's say you don't have a blue available for this, you have to clearly define who's in charge. Don't let them try to sort out you know, and, and be idiots because they'll be, they'll, they'll be, both of them will be fucking idiots. You know, they will both decide, well, I need to be in charge because that guy over there, he's an idiot. So do not let them choose that for themselves. You clearly define who's in charge. What are the responsibilities for each person? And what does accountability look like? And this all happens before they work together. What does accountability look like? If the green's going to be in charge of the red, first of all, you're going to have a power struggle. But second of all, if the green's going to be charged in the red, the red has to understand that the green is being held accountable, not the red, for whether or not this project is successful. Because if the red thinks that the green is going or the that the red is going to be held accountable, but the green is running the show and and they're not doing what the red thinks that they need to be doing, the red's going to have a problem. So if you put a green in charge of a red, you have to make sure that the red understands that the green is clearly accountable for the results. And the green has to understand that. If the red's going to be in charge of the green, the green has to understand the red's in charge. You have to keep up with what the red says. So we have to clearly define this before you get into the thick of it. If you get into the thick of it and you haven't defined that, then the worst part of both of those monsters is going to come out. Um, and remember, they're opposites. So... It's 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 really going to uh, create some major major vibration or friction. If you have a marketing project, let's say you need a lot of hype and a lot of handshaking, a lot of kissing babies, that type of stuff, putting a blue anywhere near that team, that team's got to have a yellow on it. Absolutely has to have a yellow. If you don't have a yellow, maybe you could put a red on it. But the yellow is the ideal. So if you have a yellow on that team and you put a blue on that team. Because, hey, the blue's hanging around and they need a team to be on. You're going to drive the red nuts. You're going to be looking at the blue going, well, what's up with this idiot? What's wrong with this person? Right? You're putting the wrong wrong personality on the wrong project. Because the yellow's got to be in charge of the hype project, right? You can't put a blue who doesn't care about hype at all in charge of a hype project. The blue has to be subservient on that, on that team or they're going to completely fail. 
right? Or if you do put a blue in charge, I, I suppose you could have a blue in charge, but the blue has to be such a strong leader that they let the, the yellow actually lead their team for them or lead their project for them, right? So you have to have a very, very developed um, skill set for a blue in order to have a blue in charge of a hype project where they're, they are comfortable enough letting the yellows do what the yellows are supposed to do. Again, kind of back to the red and the, the green dichotomy, you have to really define that ahead of time or just put the yellow in charge in the first place, right? And define the accountability for the yellow. Say, this is what we're going to hold you accountable for, so you better use that blue because at the end of the day, we're going to ask you, did you you know, ground everything in data? Or if it's truly all about just going out and shaking hands and kissing babies, don't put somebody on the yellow's team that is going to completely conflict with everything that needs to be done. So we just need to be really aware of how these opposites work because when when we are aware of that, think about how much better we can get people in the right position and how much friction we can we can actually reduce across the organization. So all this is not to say that there shouldn't be diversified teams. As we said before, we need to avoid filling our teams with people who are just like us. We need the whole color wheel in there. You know, the the the, the more colors the for most things, the better. Um because if we don't, we'll be missing Crucial capabilities. You've got energy, data, excitement, and support. Red, energy. Blue, data. Yellow, excitement. Green, support. A lot of projects need most, if not all, of those components. But we need to do so in a way that we're aware of what each of those primary monsters are bringing to the table and how to set them up in an ideal way so that everybody gets to be successful. We don't do this very well sometimes. We put people in charge because of seniority or because they're most like us or because they're our friends or whatever or because of their you know internal title or something, not necessarily because they're best suited for the project and the other people who are going to be on the team. Um, so in an ideal world, the team has components of all colors, and um, but there's really defined roles and expectations and people understand who's being held accountable for what. And the, the entire construct is designed about around each person's inherent talents and whatever skills that they've learned. So the, the stronger they are in their different skills, maybe the more responsibilities and actually the more accountable they're probably going to be on that team. So if we can do these things, our effectiveness is going to go way up. And these little monsters of ours... On, on, on the fuckery side, the, the monsters that ruin everything. We're going to keep them in check. They're not going to get the best of us. 